All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Oh, it is Fat Tuesday. Jim just timed it. Yes. Happy Fat Tuesday. <laughs> oh, it is. Yes, it is. Ash Wednesday <laughs> tomorrow. Know. Well, only for yeah. Catholic, I guess. <laughs> hey, everyone. How are you doing today? Let's see. Chime in. Let us know where you are tuning in from. Oh, hey, Michael. Hey, Galia. Nice to see you guys here. <laughs> yes, I can. I can. <laughs> Oh, what? What's going on? What's going on, Robin? Oh, I had to take my glasses off. So I wasn't getting a glare, but I can't read anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely see. Oh, my Very gosh. Ohio. <laughs> Craig's tuning in from Oregon. Oh, hello, Tennessee. All right. Yeah, back home from thing. the dance conference. <laughs> Rainer's there. <laughs> Rainer, like that posing. Oh, now you guys can read it. Dance. Good. His dance pose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that was classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we might have had a little bit of fun. So thanks, Robin and Jennifer, from joining us, uh, for joining us yeah. today. And Sue Ann, I know you guys are all busy. I think all of you had a shoot this morning. Yes. <laughs> Tis the season. Everybody is in season right now, it sounds like. So at least for preschools, right? You guys kicked it yes. off. When did yep. when did you start? When did you actually uh, start shooting? Last week. Uh, we've been doing we last week. class pictures uh, since January and some couple schools already, but this is like the beginning of the heavy stuff. Yeah. All right. Yes. Well, um, it's exciting, and I, I thank you guys for making time for today's webinar. And hope to not keep you much longer than an hour, an hour tops. I highly have a great respect of your time because I know you're trying to keep busy too, and you got a lot, a lot of work to do. But it was like Jennifer today was her first shoot of the season too, so starting to pick up. I guess as the snow starts to melt, the season begins. <laughs> Depending on if you live in a place with snow. <laughs> So, <laughs> not for us in Florida. So we typically start yeah. earlier, um, but then it gets too hot and we, you know, retire from photography and get in the pool or mm -hmm. the ocean instead. So yep. <laughs> that's how it usually works. Um, but yeah, today's webinar is all about Sunday day for pre-K, preschool photography. Um, and Sue Ann and both Robin and Jennifer are volume preschool photographers uh, utilizing photo day in their day-to-day -day workflow. Um, for workflow and for commerce. Um, so that's what today's all about. We're going to share with you um, that experience. Um, I'll show you some how to's. We'll do some live demos with the capture and importing data, um, and as well as building some recommended price sheets. Um, I'd love to get your opinion on that. Robin, Jennifer, and Sue Ann, while you're here today on what packages are selling. So make a mental note um, on your favorite packages and things uh, to sell with photo day. And don't worry, I downloaded your most popular packages before this webinar. <laughs> so I, I do like, have that information. <laughs> so, I think ours is like package D. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no letters on the packages anymore. Remember that. So. Oh, that's right. I can't wait. Well, yeah. Then I don't remember what I named them. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got you. I got you. We'll talk about that today. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna dive right in. So thank you guys. And oh, Rebecca's here too. Hey, Rebecca, um, for joining us. But all right, first things first, let's rewind and back it up to your previous workflow, because everybody has a starting point and they came from somewhere. And I think that's really valid when it comes to implementing photo day for the first time. Um, so Sue Ann, do you want to start and kind of recap your previous workflow before photo day and what that looked like? Oh, that was a headache. Um, mm -hmm. We had about a third of our schools that were on approved system. Um, the remainder of the schools were on speculation cells. So took the pictures, tried to keep the envelopes in order as we went, then matched up the numbers with the envelopes as they were curling the pictures. And then they had to order it through the rose system print and then they had to be packed and taken back to the school and sold and the paperwork on the cells a lot of lot of stuff behind the scenes um, mm. and hoped everybody bought everything we made um, then with the proofs you know just getting them printed and delivered back to the school going back picking up the orders uh, 
going through all the envelopes, all the money, play, you know, documenting it, what they ordered and then ordering them and then packing them and <laughs> so forth. Bring them back to the <laughs> store. Know, know. Then, so, yeah, it's just it, endless, never ended. <laughs> Yeah, so you were doing like a combination. Some schools were on proof and some schools were yeah. on speculation. And speculation is uh, basically you were pre-printing packages um, from the yes. images that you captured and then going back out on a sale date to sell them to the parents, right? Right, and hope they bought them. <laughs> and what did you do with all the ones that people didn't buy? Um, at the end, uh, I held them for a year. Then after a year, they got shredded. So a lot wow. of money down the drain. Oh yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, just to just throw this in here, I suspect that because a lot of the national uh, companies do that, they they do print on speculation, and I I got a feeling that you know that guilt buy, if that makes sense, you know the parents walk in, grandma walks in, they're picking up the kids, they're the pitchers. And it's just an urge that they go out and, and buy it. But I mean, that's a you've got to you've got to print a lot and keep your fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Right. But we never did that. We no. never did that. We started off with all ours have always all been proofs. So we started off um, with a just printing our own proof sheet package order sheet, and then we would use our children as slave labor and copy and staple the proofs to it been there, then been go there, and drop there. them off yep drop mm -hmm. it off the school give them a week mm -hmm. pick up the money and then we went to miller's um proof order form which was you know a b even better step because then i didn't have to do all that and have it sent directly to the school with the proofs and then i would just have to go pick up the money but then you have to go through the orders and the make sure payment and process the orders and drop them off and but now with photo day that's like alleviated all of that there you go again don't jump ahead of the I program did. yeah yeah yeah. yeah it's good it's good it's good yeah you, i think you painted you both painted a really good picture of and some people here at this webinar today are probably using or even still using a similar proofing process um or even printing on spec if you guys want to chime in um feel free to chime in on the chat how you if you're doing preschools right now like how are you currently doing it you got andrea chiming in she's always done pre-order envelopes um so every time she gets an envelope she gets a purchase so that's 100 percent of the people that are turning in that envelope are making a purchase right so um there's all different sales methods used um i always find it interesting to see like what people are doing in what areas of the country but more importantly um i guess this is a big question like why did you decide to change and i know a lot of people are here and everybody's got a different why um, but I think it's kind of relatable, um, you know, for you to share your why, because somebody might want to change because of how, you know, the same reasons you decided to change. So, um, Sue Ann, you want to kick that one off? Uh, yeah, actually, the list is pretty long on why I wanted to change. <laughs> um, I hated wasting all the pictures. Um, I've always worked on the premises of work smarter, not harder. Um, mm -hmm. So we were always trying to fine tune everything to um, work so we weren't working as much and keep things easier to, you know, flowing. Um, and the speed. Um, yes, two weeks was pretty fast, but I've always felt like we could get more accomplished because the people are so more excited if you mm -hmm. do it, you know, the quicker you get them to them they're more excited so you have that it's like having them in front of them the same concept they're excited they want you know they're they're wanting the pictures so they're going to buy more when they're excited so um but the the work smarter not harder and wasting the product was like the biggest um to encourage me well actually i was not i was all for it as soon as i heard about the concept of photo day i was like yes <laughs> This is a must. We must do this. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And for yeah. us, for us, it was it was kind of different in the way that I was when Photo Day first came on and Lisa was was telling us about it. I was kind of anti Photo Day. I'm like, you know what? Our system works. Why mm -hmm. why change? Um, 
you know, I get to keep all the money to myself. Oh, it was all about the money. And then COVID hit and you're like, oh, ouch, we, we've got to figure something out. Uh, and so we tried to do our own kind of like version of photo day, uh, but it wasn't good. Uh, and it wasn't legal as far as passwords, unique passwords for each uh, student. And so we, we put our toe in the water. And as soon as I put my toe in the water, Jennifer came up behind me and just like pushed, pushed me in, me in <laughs> uh, while Lisa was sitting there going, yeah, do it, do it, push them in. Um, <laughs> because as soon as we did, uh, just like well, Su- yeah. Suzanne said, you know, people... Not a hundred percent of a preschool, but I would say sixty percent, maybe even more. Those parents are jonesing for those pictures. They get their kids mm-hmm. dressed up, they're ready to go. Yeah. And so yeah. the sooner you can get your proofs or those images back to them, and like today, we just photographed a school. Their their images, we're gonna cull those images. We're gonna do a, a basic crop and cull. Everything else is correct because we get it right in camera, but they're gonna have their images today. Well, it was more about efficiency and, you know, consolidating and efficiency and having private galleries. That was a big thing with preschools. So each each kid has their own password and gallery. And it's nice we are not limited to the number of poses we can do. Right. So that also exactly. ups those sales. You know, we mm-hmm. used to do four. We tried to do four pictures. Sometimes we get a little crazy because we could only put so many proofs. On, on an order yeah. form. Mm-hmm. So we'd have to double up an order form or whatever. And that takes yeah. a lot of time and effort to get that done. And then there's the cost of the order forms or the proof forms or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And so all of that together, that's all been eliminated now with photo day. You, you Again, you call, they're up, they're there, they're live now, uh, the same yeah. day. And so you can really take advantage of, of, of people's thought process of, oh, how did my baby do today? Yeah. Yeah. And then well, to take think, multiple well, pictures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think this is a good example. This is one of your sets, Sue Ann, and your granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, I think a lot of people are, one of the questions that we get a lot coming from a, a either a pre model or a proofing model is like, how many images do I need to take of each person? What kind of images do I need to take and put in photo day so I can kind of match the success that like you guys are having, right? And we see that all the time in our users group um, or even coming into support chat, like how many images and how long is that going to take me? So. Uh, maybe Sue Ann, you can touch on like a little bit about your image sequence, like how you decide, and then you know I'll flip over to you, Robin and Jennifer, so you can talk about your style. Because I mean, you guys do things kind of similar, but there are I think a little different things going on in between. So, yeah. Um, well, we try to stick to a basic of a minimum of three poses. Now, that's three changing the looks of their what they're holding. You know. Uh, just the, the actual looks, but that doesn't restrict us to how many we actually put up there. So like the first shot, we might have put two to three poses up. She just has a different smile. Then the second one, there might be two of that one, same pose, just different smiles and you know, so forth. So she may have three to four different looks, but then she might have 12 to 16 images because I also take the same grouping and throw some of them into black and white. I'll also change the cropping on it to make it look a little different. So it's adding more um, product for the customer to buy. And believe it or not, they are buying multiple, same pose, different smiles. They're, yep. they're buying them like hotcakes. Um, so um, if they have siblings, we'll do sibling shots added to it. We usually do two sibling shots. Um, same thing. We'll do two different poses, but do, um, you know, several shots of it. And as long as they don't have their eyes closed and they're not crying, we'll throw them in there. Occasionally we throw a crying one in there if it's cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It depends on the Always. extent of the crying. The crying exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, yes, yes, exactly. Always. Yeah. 
Yeah, and this is a, an example from you, Robin and Jennifer, um, about one of your set designs. Are you using this one this year, or what is this one? Um, that was uh, like our ABC one, two, three, back to school kind of set. Um, that was in the fall. We do that okay. one usually in the fall because everyone's going back to school. Um, and we, I try to do different poses. So we try to do like a sitting pose, whether it's like sitting in a chair or a box or sitting on something, right? And then we do a crisscross applesauce, sit on your bottom, on your pockets pose. And then we try to do a standing pose where we can kind of crop it you know, either mid chest or headshot type. Um, like right now we did one with a little fence. And so they're standing behind the fence with their hands. And then we'll do the siblings together, either standing and sitting, um, looking at each other seems to be very popular because we get them to look at each other and then they start laughing and then they look back at the camera <laughs> laughing. Um, we have, uh, we, you know, our biggest, I think, is we almost do too many poses. That's our biggest complaint from parents that they want to purchase all of them, but they don't want to pay for all of them because <laughs> they're so good. And you're like, mm. um, and we've yeah, got some black and whites, but yeah. Yeah. I can see how that would be a complaint. Um, sometimes we see yeah. that in the feedback, like you're taking too many good pictures. I'm going to go. Yeah. Broke. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we try yeah. to limit it um, to, you know, three to six um, for just a single. And then, you know, of course, each each sibling, if we're throwing siblings in, they're going to get, you know, their own. And then together, um, we've done, we did one today with a head, like three, three, yeah, three, kids. three kids together. So you got to kind of keep that in mind too. Um, but yeah, we have packages with multiple pose options. Yeah. And they sell a lot. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, because preschool photography is typically like, you know, a year year round thing. Right. You still do something in the fall. You do something sometimes in the holidays and then in the spring and maybe during a summer program. Um, yes. You know, one thing I know just from talking to you guys over, the, you know, over the amount of time we've known each other is that like set design is so entirely important, like giving them something new and fresh to look at. Yes. There's a different scene for them in addition to the different mm -hmm. poses um, over time. Yes. So like, I guess my question to you is like these set designs, like where are your resources? How do you come up with these things? I mean, do you just walk around Hobby Lobby and hope to get expired and fired? <laughs> like what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually I'll see something like um, one of our sets is a 50s set and I saw this little bitty red and white vinyl couch for like a kid's like it looks like a diner style right and so that inspired me and I went and got we got like a black and white checkered floor and had a records you know the big well, not 45s I don't even know what the big records, records were on the background so I worked out yeah I found that couch and I'm like all right I love this couch I've got to set do a set with it yeah and that's that's usually been the cases. So when we first started out, um, she I don't know where you came up with the idea, but it was like a fishing pond. And so we ordered the the pier from. Uh, can I say who we ordered it from? Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, okay? Yeah. okay. So yeah, we so we ordered it from Denny's. Well, Denny's sent us the wrong pier. They sent us a gray pier. We ordered a natural colored pier. So they were like, well. Don't don't send it back because it costs too much to ship back. Keep it. We'll send you other one. So we went from trying to design one set to then we had two. So we had the natural colored pier on basically like a fishing kind Muslim, of. Yeah. It was a yeah the muslin background, but we had a whole bunch of greenery, a mirror for reflection at the front of the pier, and and, and so forth. And then we took that gray one, got a beach background and then just started filling that up yeah and i think when you're doing preschools you have to have stuff for them to hold or get excited about you know because babies and toddlers they'll stick their hands right in their mouth 
or the kids get anxious mm-hmm. and they start grabbing different parts of their body. And mm-hmm. so we yeah, find you gotta out, like, give you know, the kids what, something to hold on to. Yeah. yeah that's you know, true. do you want to yeah. hold the book or you get, you get the book or an apple or, you know, I have little stuffed animals. Like if it's Easter, here's a little bunny for you. The fishing pond, I actually had a little fishing pole and that, you know, the only thing you have to watch is that is it starts going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> photographing preschool. Goals, I think is a double team too. you it takes two of you because one's behind the camera trying to engage the child and then you have to have someone on the side helping to pose and you know make sure they're not running off the set or yeah. grabbing something that they're not supposed to or there's yeah it's a lot of control and then trying to get those real natural smiles yeah so um, before I cut over to Sue Ann, um, where do you guys typically get most of your props or, you know, stuff for your sets? Who are your, who are your providers? Denny's uh, Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Denny Hobby Lobby. Uh, we went to a, Amazon. A, Amazon. Amazon. We went to a, uh, what and, is that? It's outdoor? A, like an antique flea markets. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a really big one here in, in Canton, in, Texas, called Canton. Yeah. yeah in Canton. And we went, actually, she used to go with a whole bunch of ladies, and they'd get a drunk on a bus, and, oh, sorry, anyway, <laughs> squirrel, squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, um, so one year, I, you know, the ladies went without her, because we were working, so then I had to go with her, and believe it or not, there was like a pile of junk um, just stacked together, and I walked by it twice, and I was like, that could be a set, and Jennifer's, yeah. like, looking at me, it's like... It's almost like that Nene, that attic one. Yeah, that first image on the left. A that lot of just, that was, like... It was just a lot of stuff, garage sale. and so what we did was we um, we had David May, May, Mayhew, Mayhew made that. Uh, do a custom background. We do do some custom backgrounds. Those... For that specific set. Actually... Those two. Those two, the left and in the middle. Are those custom are uh, custom designed. designed by David Mayhew, and he does a phenomenal job. And then we just work around that and fill it in with stuff. Yeah, yeah. you just kind of think of layers and, you know, where they're going to, where you're going to set them, you know, because it is volume and, you know, they're young. You've got to, you'll, they, you'll lose their attention span fast. So, yeah, yeah. you just got to. I'm be- just. I'm just going to go out on a limb here. Um, you know, is it being a preschool photographer doing this set design? Is this part of the fun is figuring out the sets and decorating yeah. it? Yeah. Really it is. Together? It can be. Yeah. 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 When it comes together, it's great. You know, when like mm-hmm. Jennifer, that first set, we still use that first set on a regular basis. And, you know, I have to give her props. I'm like, wow, where did you come up with that? Because, it, it was similar to other people's sets, but it was totally unique at the same time. Well, yeah. And I'll go to different people's websites and friends I know and, you know, look at some of uh, Sue stuff or Belinda Higgins has some nice stuff. So, you know, you can, you, you know, you kind of get ideas and then tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a question. Yeah, you know, in, you, right? Do you guys, okay. um, so, oh, I'm sorry. Do you guys change no. sets um, every year? Do you always look for something new and fresh? We've got a warehouse. <laughs> well, we've been you doing could a, drive a semi truck and park it. You know, over 15 years, you have a lot of stuff. And I found that you can start repeating some sets at a school probably every five, seven years. Yeah. Um, well, you usually, can start, usually four because they cycle out. Right. Yeah. yeah. They come some come mm-hmm. and go. Um Ours, you know, come from, some of them have infants and all the way to five, six years old. So, mm-hmm. And our schools, we, we tr- we've we really tried to lock it down to where we pick a set and that's for, for the, season. the season. So this, this spring, you know, it's, it's this set. Uh, but, you know, the schools will go on our website and go, no, we really want this one. And so, you, you, you know, you kind of, you try and be firm, but honestly, nah. It is, it is what it is. Yeah, that's the, you know, changing out um, for, yeah. for different schools um, is a little bit. Yeah, we have some more questions rolling in. Um, for, for Have you guys ever tried to do this using green screen or know anyone that ha- has tried? I, I would imagine that might be a little bit of a mm-hmm. nightmare with green spill and the kids moving mm-hmm. around being too wiggly. Yes. 
Um, and what is there to get excited about? Part of it is even the teachers and the staff, they come in and they see it and they get excited and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this is not in the kids. I mean, not yeah. everything you yeah. see in the pictures. I mean, some of our sets are really big, but when you crop them, you don't see everything. But it's part of the reaction from the staff talking about it. Yeah. And directors. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, so for, oh, and then I guess Chris corrected, um, green screen with props. Um, I have seen a couple yeah. photographers doing that. It is a little bit of a technical challenge, I think, still with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you said, when a kid, you know, when these small children see your set and all the fun things going on, it typically gives a different vibe than just yeah. going right to a green right. screen with like an apple or something. So yeah. you're really capturing mm -hmm. that expression. And, and the expression is what is selling um yes. you know the most right it's how yep. you know the kids face looks i mean overall the set can be the most beautiful set in the world but if you don't get that natural smile or that expression that moms love it's going to have a hard time converting that into a a bigger sale so yeah exactly um, yep. uh jim had a uh, question uh you guys can answer this if you want how many schools do you photograph preschools <laughs> Mm. Honestly, we used to do about 20 to 30 preschools, but it was just Jennifer and I. Uh, and the schools that here in Houston that we, we focus in on usually start at 150 kids kids on up to we have one school that's, well, their numbers are down. Everybody's numbers are down because of COVID. But prior to COVID, their numbers were, they fluctuated between five and 600 kids. We have some Mother's Day Out programs. That are um, massive. That are big. And so... So that's who we try and focus. So we typically are between 20 to 30 schools. Um, preschools. However, preschools. However, as our business has evolved, we've started doing more, more other schools. So okay. kindergarten okay. all the way through 12th grade. So with that, it's they're much easier to photograph. Yeah, um, we can pick and we can pick and choose our you know, we can be picky on the schools, the preschools that we do yeah. photograph. Yeah. So our high dollar profit preschools and Mother's Day outs, we keep. And let me let me also throw this out there. So for those of you who are going to be in forums or go to uh, any of the conventions and so forth, and you hear these people and they've got 20,000 heads or, or whatever, this massive number of, of either students or schools, y'all keep in mind that yeah, they, they have that, but they get one shot at that, right? That's that's just strictly yearbook. That's not preschools. Preschools, uh, again, in Houston, we have, technically, you could have five seasons or five goes at it, right? You've got spring. You've got class and graduation. You have summer. You have fall. And then you could have holiday. Um, we typically don't do summer. We don't want to, like, totally burn out everybody. Um, but for spring, class graduation, fall, and then holiday, um, you get four goes of that. So don't be so down um, about people going, oh, you photograph preschools. That's not much. Yeah, but if you do 20 to 30 preschools and they're anywhere between 150 to 600 students and you're doing them four times a year, or I think... Suzanne, you have you actually have staff uh, working for you, so you do mm -hmm. a ton more preschools, um, <laughs> and probably have more heads than a lot of the people who claim to be big time school photographers. Uh, I, we I, have I, two, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm upwards of ninety accounts. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple times a year. <laughs> mm -hmm. Multiple times a year. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of accounts when you put it all together, for sure. And then, Jim, you—I see averages. So prior to photo day, our average was what was it, forty-six? No, well, maybe forty-six, fifty. Somewhere in there. Right now, our our averages. Well, prior to our, we have a huge volleyball season. So prior 60, to volleyball season, it was sixty something. So Sixty-eight, and. Um, that was from the fall from just the school stuff. And then we started our volleyball. And so those pricing is a little different. So it's brought our average down to, I think, $63 an average, mm -hmm. I think. 
Yeah, we need yeah. the we um, need the feature request to break that out by job type on the dashboard, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Please. Um, mine it, when it was studio or before photo day was a, right at a fifty one to fifty two, and now yeah. I'm at a um, a few cents from a seventy three. Yeah. Woo! I know you're working on that average. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Rebecca has a good question before we move on from this, but you know, any tips that you can share about getting great expressions from the kids? I think Robin's reputation might <laughs> precede himself here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've got some. Robin will say. You know, we found out like, oh, cheeseburger. You know, when you say cheese, cheeseburger, it makes them s smile. And then one kid looked over at Robin and's like, you look like you like a lot of cheeseburgers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, of course, so all the kids start laughing. So that was that was good. And then there was a someone said he looked like Mr. Potato Head recently. So all the kids went on with that. And we have a we have a squeaker that we kind of hide in in your hand at whoever's the photographer whoever's taking the pictures and usually him and we he'll squeak it and they don't know where it's coming from so we're like well you that's you smiling every time you smile it squeaks and they and then all the kids are laughing so it's just being silly with the kids and mm -hmm. you know tickling yeah. them i have a it's a rainbow feather duster i call it the tickle stick nice. so i'll go in there with that with them um yeah, it's just being silly with them. Um, we had a little fart machine noise thing at one point. The yeah. teachers didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> the teachers didn't like that. Yeah. that <laughs> but the kids loved it, and we kids it was love funny. the fart machine. That was that was on my phone app, by the yeah, way. You can get was, that. It's a free app. Oh, so. my God. oh yeah, I have a bag Pretty full much. of like Elmo, Cookie Monster, Shark. Oh, yeah baby shark whatever's current uh, whatever's current in exactly, their day yeah, yeah. but yeah yep. same thing just being goofy with them and treating them like little humans and not like they're you know yeah. just supposed to sit down and shut up you know talking to them and right stuff. They're, yep yeah and some of them they're scared they don't want to take a picture they're shy so i'll kind of engage them like mm -hmm. did Oh, did you get your nails done? I see your nails painted. Oh, those look like mm -hmm. new shoes. Can I get a picture of your shoes? Yeah. <laughs> you know, your dress is so pretty. I, I want a picture. I, I want a, I want a picture of that engage. dress. And, yeah, mm -hmm. it's engaging exactly. and just talking to them. Yeah. yeah. Now, exactly. do you guys you get some like freebie commission class group questions coming in? Um, so I was just kind of take this and run with it. But um, what do you guys do? Um, you both do commissions back to your schools, most of your schools, half the schools. Um, if uh, they ask, it. if they ask, yes, but I don't bring it up. <laughs> and here's the thing with our commissions, our commissions, if we give back to the school, it's based on an annual agreement. They, yeah. So they, they'll get their fall. So if we start in the fall, they'll get their fall commission check when we go back to the school in the spring, when because if you give them their check for the fall, guess what? There's zero loyalty well, I shouldn't say zero, but there's a very little loyalty in the preschool game. You can do everything right and they can love you and they will go with someone else to try somebody else to appease a parent, whatever the case may be. And so we, we give out our commission check at the spring when we're at the school photographing the spring and they'll get their spring commission check later on usually that summer or whatever so we've completed the terms of our agreement for that year if it's just a one and done they're not going to get a commission well and it's 10 percent and and it has to be like a minimum like you know if you're at a school that has maybe 60 kids then i'll tell them you know if your parents spend this much then i will give you something as well because i can't go in somewhere and not make any money and then they're thinking they're going to get something um and um what do we do the 10 percent after everything after all of our costs yeah after all of our costs so that also helps on in photo day because you'll see basically 
uh, your sales and then what actually is coming back to the, your studio and then you can reduce any other oh, expenses. And I don't call it a commission check or a kickback. I call it a fundraiser. Okay. So I'm giving a fundraiser back right. and I do an invoice so they can kind of see what they're getting. And um, we used to do other stuff like we have a bubble machine. So we would offer like a bubble party outside as a photo booth, yeah. photo okay. booth, all, all sorts of stuff. Just We're getting that. old now, so we don't do all that <laughs> stuff. It's like, yeah, yeah right. sometimes it's just easier, uh, yeah, just to do it simple, right? Um, yeah. Right. What, what do you typically do? Um, my area is an uh, average of 15% um, is the going rate. Um, in the spring, we tend to not give commission, but we give gifts to the graduates, um, which is like a diploma of sorts with the picture on it. Um, and the rest of the, I'm the kind of the same way it's commission only on the profit and it's, um, contingent on if they do everything to help us succeed in the cell. So if they don't right. pass out anything or don't help us and the cells are crappy, then they don't get anything. So, exactly. um, yeah, they have um, to help we do. Us. We we do give staff like teachers um, fifty percent off. Yeah, printed we do that a, a printed package. Yeah, nothing, no specialty items or anything, but on a printed package. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then owner, if the owner actually is there with kids, we'll give them a complimentary package. Yeah. Um, well, awesome. Well, I guess uh, we'll dive into workflow here and what it actually looks like with Photo Day. So I know one of the most challenging pieces that we all have is getting the actual data for Picture Day. Yes. Um, so I'm sure people are tuning in today would love to hear how you manage to get that data that you need for Picture Day. <laughs> so no, uh, sometimes it's uh, well, uh, now that we've been using Photo Day for 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 the what a couple of years? No, just yeah. just over a year because COVID. So we've been with Photo Day for uh, I guess a year and a half now, and um, basically, if the schools don't want to give us the data, we've told them we don't want to photograph them. So I wouldn't recommend that to everybody. <laughs> But I mean, we, I, we got around a lot of them. It's not so much giving us the information. It's getting the emails is the problem. Mm -hmm. So I still have a private gallery. So each kid still has their own ID. I just use um, the school, forward it to the school and the school has to be in charge of. So once you get your data, you put it into your private gallery Usually you have emails and you can sit there and send a marketing or pre-sale or whatever out to the clients on an individual basis. Whereas with uh, a private gallery with no emails, then that's going to go to the organization. And then they have each individual flyer that they can either print out or they have to deal with. As soon as you show them that, they're motivated to get you the emails. Uh, but we have gone the extra step of when we go to email the organization, we email ourselves, and then we get all of the individual uh, passwords, print mm -hmm. those out, and then we have one of our kids or Jennifer will sort them and turn right around and then give them to back to the school, and they're organized by class. And now they have passwords that they can give out. And usually we tell them, hey, give these out the day after we're done with with, with photographs. Because that way that gives us time to crop, cull crop, and then upload. Yeah. Um, Sue Ann, do you have some, uh, how do you get the data typically? Do you have run into obstacles um, as well? Well, I don't run into as many obstacles anymore um, as far yeah. as getting it. But I mean, thanks to COVID, believe it or not, I hate to say that, yep. but um, no, yeah, it's they, true. they will give it to us. Yep. Um, I have noticed this season we've had more and more schools starting to voluntarily yep. give us the emails um, yes. because they're noticing they have less work to do then. They don't have to you know, pass out stuff. Um, we mm -hmm. did have a school 
um, some some schools they're not, especially the smaller preschools, they're not technically savvy and may not know how to do a, C a CSV or something like that. So yep. we'll just mm -hmm. tell them, send Excellent. us a photocopy yeah. of your roster. We'll type it up for you just to get the information. Yep. Um, and we even told mm -hmm. school, uh, I think it was Thursday or Wednesday, something. If we don't have these today, we have to reschedule your shoot. And guess what? We had them like 30 minutes later. We've been bugging <laughs> them every day for like three weeks and they finally you know, we're going to have to reschedule yeah. you at the end of the season. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. pretty much. That's the magic yeah. word. We're going to have to reschedule you. I think, mm -hmm. too, once it's hard if it's like a new school and it's a new system and you're new for software, it's hard to get that information. But once they see it and trust you and know you're not going to spam anybody. Right. It's a lot easier. I think it's just that yeah. initial yeah. visit or that first one and then they're fine. It's, yeah. And then also. I think Scott asked, what, what does the data include? Basically, first name, last name of the student, uh, the class that the student's in, and then an email. One or two emails. One or two emails, and yeah. then that's it. That's, yeah. That's all you need. Yeah, and Jim so was asking. You're... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, this go ahead. Okay. Oh, no, I said Jim was asking, can can we just use like a group or public gallery with the face find only search option? Um, and I think that's a really valid question. We see that uh, question pop up a lot. Um, but the face find only function doesn't securely protect the individual's gallery because anyone can go to social media, get an image search if they know. I mean, if I mean, if you're really, really trying to be like straight up, like this is the way we're supposed to do it. That option really doesn't work for a true private gallery. Um, but uh, what we do recommend is using, I mean, using FaceFine on the back end with the Capture app, right? So, you know, getting the data, um, using the Capture app um, for communication, you know, in a, I think in a smaller setting like a preschool where the kids are there every single day, um, multiple days a week, it's a lot easier to communicate a private gallery versus like rec sports where they're only there once a week or twice a week because they're mm -hmm. practicing at different fields. Um, it might be a little bit harder to get that data. And plus it's mainly volunteer based, but for preschools, I don't think it's, it doesn't sound like it's a big giant pain point for you guys um, with getting the data and using capture and, and making the galleries um, private. Is that, is that, am I right to assume that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, yeah. And COVID helped a lot with the schools too, because we were like, listen, it is eliminating paper and the touch. No one's touching money. No one's touching order forms, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. that kind of really gave a lot of our schools a push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Definitely. That was good. Yeah. So, so the data that you're getting, you're basically getting first name, last name, which classroom they're in and the email addresses, right? You're really not getting right. any other data yep. beyond That's that. It. That's it. Keep it really simple because you're only using mm -hmm. it to, you know, filter your capture list when they're bringing them to mm -hmm. you by class and um, right. and know who, to, who they go back to. Um, exactly. right, and that's yeah, it. that's important. That's important. Getting back <laughs> to the right class. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I guess we have um, what I wanted to show. I kind of share my screen here um, with you guys to kind of show you what the back end of Photo Day looks like for this uh, specific case, what we're talking about right now. Um, which is like a sample data file here. Um, you can see on my screen now, this is just for a school sample data file. So it has student ID and grades and stuff. This wouldn't even be relevant in the preschool world. It would just be first name and last name. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm just gonna, cause Scott just timed in, chimed in with a question. I think we just answered it. What about using group instead of private galleries? And I think that, you know, that's what I wanted to circle back on um, just the importance of having a true private gallery, especially in a preschool setting where there may or may not be foster children, um, you know, where yeah. there's you know, children that are right. Yeah. You really need that line. private gallery and a face fine only is not very private because think about it this way. If there is a, if there is a foster situation or the bio parents have a picture of their kid, they can just, Grammar. they know where their kids go into school for the most part, they can go right in there and they can search for their kids. So it's not really super secure it gives a sense of security but it's not really as secure as having private galleries where you're using face find to cluster the photos with a reference photo on the back end and then they still have that 
access code to get into the gallery. So hopefully that answers your question. I think we all want the easy button, but in there are some cases where you got to do a little bit extra. Um, yeah. Just to make sure and everything I think is... And I think, uh, sorry to interrupt, Lisa, I think that was really our turning point uh, during COVID and us trying to do it our own, having our own uh, photo day system was we have, have two schools that are, are special needs schools uh, where they're basically on the spectrum or fully autistic or levels of autism and so forth. Mm -hmm. And we explained to the school, this is what we can do. It's COVID. Uh, they agreed to everything. And immediately that group gallery went live and it wasn't with, with photo day, but it, we had a group gallery and with just one password and immediately, you know, we got f the school got calls and then they called us take down the gallery because with uh, kids with special needs or autism and so forth, uh, if they've already been documented as having those special needs with the state, there's all kinds of additional special protections afforded them beyond just regular little kids. Uh, and so we had to go back and create a password for every single child um, mm -hmm. because it was, you know, it was brought to the school's attention. We all knew it, but we we're like, look, this is how we can get pictures done during COVID. And that was another pushing point to to go. Okay, well, we just we gotta we gotta go and call Lisa and. <laughs> and get photo done. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show you guys here. Um, Andrea's question: Are you assigning the student ID? No, I, I should probably show you a preschool. bad example in that pre in that uh, preschool data that data file I just put up on my screen is for like an elementary school, which you know when they when they get into the public sit school system and they register in kindergarten they will have a student id that kind of follows them throughout that district um and that's yep. where you link back for yearbook stuff and for administrative purposes um every kid has like a number basically um and yeah. and that's where that comes in for preschools that does not pertain to preschools for the most part um i, I don't think at all actually so not even for the no. most part I don't, i've never seen a preschool no. with any kind of student id no. um but no. so um, I just wanted to show you guys, um, you know, setting up a job and, you know, and the workflow on how that looks in photo day here. Um, so I'm just going to put a preschool test job in here so you guys can see my screen on, you know, on how, how it's set up as photo day and how you get the data in there and how the capture workflow works. Cause I know a lot of people want to see that. Too. <laughs> so, and I know, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, Robin, Jennifer, Stulan, if I'm going through this, if you have um, anything that you do differently, especially on capture, or maybe when we get to the capture part, you can kind of talk about how your capture workflow works on picture day, how you're using the capture app, I think would be interesting for people um, to hear. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and set up just like a fake picture day in here and create it and get that uh, gallery in here. Now, here's the three different types of galleries that photo day has to offer, you know, between group, public and private. Um, obviously we are uh, big for preschools in the private gallery where every student or every child is gonna have their own access code. And I'm gonna answer your question right now, guys. Like if there are multiple kids in the same school and they all have different unique galleries, yes, mom can check out together on one transaction. Um, so that does work in a private gallery. We get asked that question all day long. So I just wanted to share that while we're live. Um, and then getting that data that you get to the school in here. Yes, Andrea, the Capture app is part of Photo Day. You can download it from the App Store, iOS um, or Android. Um, it is compatible with iOS or Android devices. Um, so here I'm going to add th that subject data that you just saw on my screen. I'm going to go ahead and put it in here um, so you can map everything uh, accordingly. So this data has a student ID. You will not have that for preschools. Um, but for sake of demo, I'm just showing you guys what it looks like when you map that data in there and it produces a record. Now, the important thing here with the Capture app, um, and you can see my phone on the other side of my screen, when I refresh it, it'll sync and you'll see the job preschool test pop up, the one. You always want to sync this while you're still online. And if you're planning on working offline, um, you'll want to click this little green button um, to make sure that that gallery is synced to your device and it is able to go offline. That is a very important new feature of the Capture app leading into this spring. So if you've used Capture before and you're starting to use it now again this spring, 
Um, we made some changes to speed up the Capture app. This little green button means you can work offline on that job. So make sure you have that selected before you go. Um, so when I go into that job, I can see the same data here that's on my screen, right? Now I can go offline. I can work. Uh oh, I lost Robin and Jennifer. Or did they just shut the video off? I don't, I don't know, know what you can. Oh, they might have just went away. I think they quit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> they'll be back. Um, but over here, oh, Michael, what are you asking me if I can do again? Click the button. Is that what you're asking me? That little sync button? I can disable sync um, or I can enable it here. Hopefully that's what you're asking me to do. Um, but once you have that data in there and your device is synced, um, you can go and start taking reference photos um, here on your device, right? So, um, so no, you are enabling sync and disabling sync. So if you are working offline, make sure that sync is enabled. If you are working online, um, it doesn't really matter because it, um, you can always push it later, but, uh, you'll definitely want to have that green button lit up if you are not going to have internet connectivity at your event. So yes. Galia, you're right. Yep, that's exactly what that means. It allows you to work offline mm -hmm. on the job and then resync when you're home. Um, so I do want to show you guys um, what that looks like. Sue Ann, can you talk a little bit about how you do the reference photos? Um, you know, who's doing that? What does your picture day look like? Um, um, the well, as the they either bring them in by class or they just bring them in straggling depending on uh, how organized they are but I just take and either sort by class if we're working on a class and I'll go through and I'll check everybody in that's in there. And then <laughs> we just take their pictures Bad. and we can uh, keep track of uh, who hasn't, or, you know, if they're absent or for who hasn't been in there yet. Um, yeah. and we can ask the teachers, you know, okay, are these children here? And they can tell us, you know, and we'll either mark them absent or we'll go get them. Um, oh, glad. that's pretty, pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to demo what Sue Ann just showed real quick. So you can kind of see me on my screen too. Um, I'm just taking screenshots. Well, let me get the cursor out of her face. <laughs> um, but yeah, what the capture app looks like on picture day is just that you're filtering by the data that you have. Um, and then you're just finding the student and checking them in. Um, just like I'm doing here on my screen. Now, the cool thing about photo day is that the, 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 it, the data here is truly dynamic. So if at any time is something spelled wrong, if somebody needs to have updated information, if you need to add anything to their data card in here, you can do that. Um, so all of this um, can be edited. So if this person had the wrong last name, because that is my daughter, um, I can go ahead and change the name. Um, and then when I'm sim synced back here, since I am on Wi-Fi, you can see the images populating on my uh, other screen here um, as well. So even if, say, you couldn't find a student in the list um, or a person in the list, you can go ahead and add right. them on the fly and sync it later. So even if your data wasn't complete, um, it is truly dynamic and you're able to do these things um, with Photo Day um, using the Capture app. And that's, what, that's what's so cool about it. Um, important things to note. Um, capture failed. If you have more than one face in your capture photo, it's probably going to cluster both of those faces in the reference image. So that's either a hack or a fail, depending on what you're trying to do, right? Yes. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and what are, can you explain what the hack is, Sue Ann? I know you use this sometimes. <laughs> um, siblings. Maybe yep. one child is a um, after schooler that doesn't actually attend the preschool. But the parents want pictures taken together instead of taking the time to create a separate um, gallery for that older sibling we'll take one picture of both faces and so everything's pulled into that gallery because he doesn't need to be any of the export data um, if we are making a composite or for their software or anything like that so we'll just do one picture of the multiple siblings and then it just puts all the pictures into one gallery. Yeah, nice. Allie has a good question here while we're talking about it, but has anyone asked questions about why you were taking photos of the student with your own phone? Um, 
I actually use mini iPads on the yeah. in the field um, with the occasion of technical difficulties, and then I'll use a, a phone as backup. But mm -hmm. the teachers see that I'm using an app that has the data. They they see that it's not just me taking pictures of their kids. That they yeah, see we I'm explain that it to information. Them. Yeah. So I, I haven't really had any pushback at all on that. What I've done too is the director or whoever, you know, the director, I'll add them in as in the roster. And then I'll go there and say, now, this, and I'll show her this is how it works. So I'll take a picture of her, pull her name up, take a picture and show her, and then show her how it has all that information listed. And, and then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, I mean, it's even common now when you go, I mean, at least where I'm taking my kids to the pediatrician, they're being checked in on an iPad. Mm -hmm. um, when you yeah, check yeah. in at the hospital now, you're checking in with a face scan or biometrics, put your whole handprint on the thing now. It's like, mm -hmm. I think biometrics in general are becoming more and more used as a check-in. Like, you are you. You are mm -hmm. who you say mm -hmm. you are when you're coming to my appointment. So it's becoming a lot more normal than it was, say, five years ago when when we just started unlocking our phones with our face and that was weird all together. So. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty but used yeah. to it. Kids are used to it. I get better smiles sometimes on the capture app than I'm taking a picture. <laughs> and Jim with uh, the, the question about class group. Yes, we do class photos. That's part of the uh, graduation and class photo session with preschools. And Here's the thing. Out. You take that picture and through facial recognition, each 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 child each student will get a copy in their own gallery of that class photo it is a beautiful beautiful thing uh, and what we're doing this year compared to last year is we're doing uh, a school or, or preschool we're, we're keeping one gallery uh, for that school year so they get spring photos, they get their class photos, they have their fall photos, they have all of that for the school year in this gallery. So that way, if they miss the first go round, we'll get them on the second go round or the third go round or the class or the holiday or whatever the case may be. And I'm not have to take their picture every time because it's in there from the first one. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just gonna go ahead while we were chatting and uploading a, a group of photos. I only did two reference photos, but there's like multiple photos in here, like what you're talking about, group photos and things like that. Um, and so the cool thing about this workflow, I think too, is that as you create the images and you know, you go out, you take all your different variations, you come back, you post-process them, convert some of them to black and white. Um, do any last minute touch ups you need to do if there was too much snot on a kid's face or whatever. <laughs> um, and then you go ahead and upload them to the gallery. And can you just like talk about your experience with the matches and the accuracy and, and this part in general, like how does it work for you? I think everybody wants to always hear that answer to that question. Maybe Sue Ann, you can kick it off because I know you do a lot of the uploading. So. Yeah, um, actually I'm, Almost every job, I'm more and more impressed at FaceFind because depending on who's doing the checking in for you, especially with the little ones, they don't always, you can't always catch them looking straight at the lens. They might turn their head or, or you might get a teacher that takes a picture of the top of their head. And the non-matched, uh, for the last, I think, 10 jobs I've put up, I have not had any not matched. And I'm just like yeah. totally floored when I look at some of these capture pictures. I'm like, really? It caught that? Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah. non -focused. It, it seems like it gets better and better, you mm -hmm. know, every day. It just, some of the stuff, it's just the little guys with the, the turning the head is the biggest thing that it just, or mm -hmm. tiny, tiny babies that they really don't have any face, you know, yet to, to map, yeah. so to say. They're just one big round little ball, you know and it matches them or twins and it gets it right and you're just yep. like floored you know it, it's amazing at how wonderful it is <laughs> yeah usually oh go ahead go ahead i was gonna say usually if there is an unmismatched it's because the capture photo was not right <laughs> user error <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I have an announcement to make. <laughs> it's usually the capture you. app doesn't work when you photograph their feet <laughs> or somehow the floor <laughs> or your thumb or it does your, finger. Yeah, it what does, what it we does really finger. need, Lisa? What what we need is in the user groups or wherever, maybe on the Facebook page or wherever, like your embarrassing capture <laughs> photos. Because she's got the top three, <laughs> guaranteed. Like you look at that and you're like, how? It finds them out of yeah, focus. Like how too. did this like, even? Yeah, like it's how did really it work? good. It's good. Yeah. So usually when you go up and you check unmatched images, it's I I, I already know it's like, mm -hmm, what'd she do this time? And you <laughs> click and you're like, that's a foot. Or a teacher. How did you photograph a foot? Some of them are are, are the school helping us is yeah so, yeah but the app yeah it's good um yeah uh and then casey your question about out pictures um yes you have to always be prepared to be throw we've been in like closets and had to photo literally oh. a closet yeah. And oh, and okay. had to 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 change Hallway. things around like a break room. Um, yeah. So with the class photos, one thing that we we started doing years ago and it didn't take off as as well as I thought, but it did take off was we do a class composite. So instead of having to to get everybody together and take eight pictures of the same class and then swap faces or heads because that's what you're going to have to do. Um, we just did a composite, and if you show your preschool, hey, here's a, here's another option, uh, and the upside to that option is is you're guaranteed to always have a, a good headshot uh, of of the students, even babies, because you can get up there close and get mm -hmm. in their business and take those and build that composite, or yeah, be prepared to go outside and do a class picture outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but do you typically separate your uh, class composite or class group sales from the actual individual photos or do you stick it all together? So put it in the gallery, you mean in the gallery? Unfortunately, yeah, well, we, so we're with our, for, for preschools, cause so we started last year, so we missed uh, our class photos with preschools last year. So this will be our first preschool this year. Schools, totally separate, but we've done That's class so photos cool. and that works out great. But um, the cost of a class photo is different than, you know, a, a regular five by seven or an eight by 10. So you've got to sit there and, and, and figure that out because you don't right. get to set a, 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 a price as of yet that's on the list. Um, uh, so you can't identify that or label that image and say it can only be this at this price. So yeah. we've had to, we've had to work with our schools as far as that. Some of our schools have said, you know, we don't care price it, whatever other schools are like, yeah, we'd like it to be at this price. So then we either have to create another gallery or what we've tried to do this year is as our as our our fundraiser is give the schools a class photos. Class photos don't make a lot of money. They've never made a lot of money for not me. Not preschool. Yeah. Not a preschool. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather give them that, put a value on that. So that way the school thinks they're getting something back in return mm -hmm. of, of greater value. And if I've got to print up a picture for everybody and give it to the school. I'd much rather do that than pay 10% off of spring and fall sessions. Yeah, sure. it's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting mm -hmm. uh, thought that it might be more hassle and expensive for you to attempt to sell, sell a class photo it than it would be for you to replace the commission with a class photo. It's like, you know, it's like yeah. whatever. Yeah, the class photos are hard in preschool to do because they're so little and young and they're looking in, you know, every direction. So trying to get mm -hmm. a good photo of all of them looking at the camera yeah, and mm -hmm. not crying or half are crying. And yeah, so it's, it's kind of like a lost leader type thing. You're like, yeah, here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then for anyone uh, new that's tuning in, um, what's happening here in the background as we're chatting, 
Um, it's, you know, going through this, I've uploaded 53 images and it's continuously matching. So, you know, if you have a day two um, where you go back in, you captured them on day one even, and you dump it in the yeah, gallery, yeah. there is no button to press to run face find again. It continuously runs um, in your gallery. Yeah. So every time you upload, it's gonna cluster the photos together. Um, so you could do like subsequent picture days, but still have the same job um, with using yep. private yeah. galleries. You're gonna run into yeah, that and we, schools. And we do that because like we said, well, our preschools that have 300 kids, we only photograph in the mornings. So we're like from eight to 11. Mm -hmm. And then if we, you know, depending, you know, we'll break it down like, you know, 100 kids that morning and then we'll come back the next day and do the next group and then any that were missed or absent. Or they weren't dressed or, or they're crime. dressed differently so, yeah. or they got their hair done but yeah, differently. Yeah, we yeah. don't have to set up different. Yeah, it's set up based by school, I guess. Yeah. But the face blind is going to work yeah, 99% of the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's talk about once you get all this stuff uh uploaded and what your price sheets really look like or what are your um what are you actually selling because you know we did have a lot of um talks about um you know what you know not taking your spec packages or your proofing packages or your prepay packages and moving them to online because it doesn't really really make a lot of sense right so how did you guys determine your packages when you were uh, first building your price sheets in Photodayer. What's working now for you? Um, Stu Ann, do you want to kick that one off? What's working? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Having a variety. Yeah, I know. I was like, I'm the queen of packages. Um, I give them a variety of what they want, um, including just prints, uh, mm -hmm prints with digital or just digital um, and I get oh gosh I haven't even looked this season to see what is most popular but um, digitals seem to be really popular um, and then yeah, the always. mixture of you know like a large family pack with you know some digitals that seems to be going and then of course you have your your basic pack um, that seems to be more popular with the older kids. Um, right. But in the preschool sector, because I do a few upper class, but the preschool sector, it's more, you know, the digital with the package. Yeah. Yeah, I have a, um, I have a package that actually has two poses, like they can pick any two, and, and then I have one with three. So that, especially with siblings, they'll usually do sibling, sibling, and then together. Um, those are popular. And like you said, the digital options, digital for just one image, and then, you know, you can bundle three to six. Um, yeah. I think it's important, yeah. too, that when you're um, creating the packages here um, and you're doing, like, you know, a, a pack of, we'll just say, 10 digitals or whatever, that you know, you've priced on what you want to sell one digital for. So of course, if they buy 10, you mm -hmm. got to factor in some kind of a discount, discount um, yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. And then you put that in the package description, right? Because then, because yes. Photoday is going to okay. automatically list out what's in your packages. So you don't have to put that in the package description. It's not the same thing as it was on prepaid forms, right? Because we're doing that automatically. So here is just more of like, how much are you saving? Like, are you saving 45 bucks? Are you saving 50% off? Or what do you get for buying this package of all these digitals? Um, I think it's really important to put in that description part. Do you guys, what else do you guys use the description for usually? Do you tell them they can mix the match poses or, you know, what do you usually no. get there? I, I just um, put um, the, the savings uh, yeah. and if it's print or digital or mixture. Um, you know, I'm more of a description of what they're getting, not necessarily that they can mix and match. That's fine. <laughs> 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 stop? <laughs> stop. No, yeah, it's more of a savings. Savings, yeah. So you're getting a higher, higher buy rate, but you're giving a saving. And um, I like to throw in the complimentary social media. Yeah. 
image, but yeah, we do nice. not sell class pictures um, as team. in as a digital or a team picture. Class or team is not done digitally. They cannot buy that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can um, you can disable downloads of any yeah. class or groups um, in or the anything gallery. that you don't want. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you can. That is awesome. Sue Ann, what is your biggest package that you sell, dollar amount wise? You got a gorilla package oh, in there? Oh my gosh, I've got. You know, I would have to look. I know it's over three hundred. You um, got a package over three hundred? Do you? Yeah. Do you guys have one? Robin and Jennifer. No, not that doing? high. You got a wild not a one. package, we, but I mean. We do make them three hundred. No, but, I've got. Um, I've got. We don't have a package. Over, I think yeah, our highest um, package is one seventy five. Your that's your department. I think it's one seventy five, yeah. and that's just digitals. Yeah, no, I've I've got up to twenty one digitals alone. Oh, good lord! Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of pitches. Well, I think talking uh, in the past to you guys, when you do have. Um, say like a mom that calls and she's got a lot of kids or a lot of images and she's like, hey, can you do something for me on this? Yeah. It's really easy to go in your order form mm -hmm. or in your price sheet here, order form. So price sheet and yeah. go in here and add, I know, <laughs> and add like a package that works for her, right? And just like, exactly. that what, is, what did you say Amanda does to Anne? She names it like... <laughs> Um, she usually will name it like the customer's last name, um, like the Smith package, um, so they can find it easy. And yeah, you know, it, it, it they get a chuckle out of it. <laughs> yeah, like, that hey, yeah, I've done that. <laughs> or I'll tell, or I'll do a, a a promo code, like an offer discount code. Say, mm -hmm. okay, you need to order this, this, and this, and then here's your code to get your discount for doing so much yeah um let's talk about these photo add-ons retouching that was a new feature that launched this past fall at photo day um you know the retouching is being done by ai it's a little bit more than uh, a basic retouch so to speak but a little bit less than an extensive you would never think that this product would actually sell for preschool oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but like, can you, like, what's your experience with the retouch so far? No, I haven't had I, any bad feedback yeah, at all. No, no bad feedback. But like you said, I was surprised that on preschools, parents would do it because I make sure that they're, you know, clean before they come up, like their face. We have wipes. I tell all the teacher, whoever's in there helping, wipe their face before they come up. Um, but yeah, I was surprised, like little scratches. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's absolutely Balls amazing. Rash. And, yeah, a little bruise, a rash, eczema. You'll you'll get parents where you'll see something, something will come across, and you see that they paid for a retouch, and you're looking at the the it image, and you're like, need it. Wow. They, didn't, they didn't need it, <laughs> they but they just, it. they're just okay. like, yeah, they're just they're just they're like, bye, money, bye, okay. bye. yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right. And you're like, all right, man. Yeah. So no, no complaints, Send, no lashback, anything like that. I no, I think I think they're all asking the ones that I have. They're asking about glass glare, but yeah, I know that's on the uh, list. That's on the list. That's the only yeah. I think other... that's coming. Uh, I think it's getting yeah, better at uh, glass glare automatic removal too. Yeah. That'll be. I mean, yeah, for eventually. preschools, that would be a a good thing because we've got we've got yelled at or or lectured about taking a kid's glasses off because of the glare, and I'm like, you know, making them feel bad and are different and. I got one lady that was like, shame on me for charging to remove glass glare because that has their child has a disability and how dare I we, <laughs> charge for that? Same <laughs> same time yeah. of parents are upset yeah. that we make their kids laugh in their images. So. Yeah. They yeah. laugh too hard. Um, the images are horrible. I got a couple yeah. incoming questions before we move on. I just want to talk about your marketing um, post picture day and how to get, get those sales. But before we do that, um, Jennifer had a question. If you take a capture app photo of a daycare kid and then their aftercare older sibling comes to school, can you retake the photo with the, cap the capture app reference photo with mm -hmm. both kids? Mm -hmm. and, and yes, you can absolutely retake yeah. um, a photo at any time. 
um, within the caption or, app and replace it. Or you can go to that image because you don't have the older sibling or the sibling, whichever, wh whatever it is. You don't have the sibling as listed as a reference photo. So it's going to come up unmatched. So you click on that photo, mm -hmm. then down below, you can update it. Uh, I think it's a cloud or something like that icon. You click on that and you can add the other sibling that you have the reference photo for and you can type in their name, it'll pop up, and then you update the image, and then that image will go um, to that same gallery. Yeah, yeah. You, um, you can come in here, hit edit, and you can remove this photo and replace it. Um, and you can do that in the app uh, capture app too. Yeah. Same thing, yeah. what you're talking about, and either we, way. And we've used uh, the back of the camera too, as oh, a yeah. reference a little photo. Chi -chi. A little yeah, you know, like if they're crying or just too upset, it's like, well, let me just click it and then I'll click on the back of the camera. So, yeah. Um, another question coming in. I'm sorry, we're over, guys. We just had lots of good stuff to talk oh, about that's good. today. So sorry about that. Um, but what would um, Shivani had a question? What advice would you give for a newbie photographing a preschool? That's a good question. Probably a can you of worms. Give yourself <laughs> lots of time. <laughs> Yeah, patience, um, patience, lots, patience. <laughs> lots of so time. So yeah. my, my uh, who asked that question? That's Shivani, that a, she asked that question, yeah. Okay, so she, okay, so we got she. So here's yeah, the thing, um, Jennifer and I, and everybody has a different way of doing things, but when we started, um, I was the photographer and she's the poser. Um, <laughs> now, I, I, anybody can be the photographer. It could be guy, it could be girl, whatever. It doesn't matter. But the poser, that should be, in my, in my opinion, it should be a female because children gravitate towards females uh, for security and comfort and, and so forth. It's very rare kids walk into the room and come running up to me and want to give me a hug. Uh, but they'll, they'll run up to Jennifer and, and clench all over her like a spider monkey. So... Having having a poser and a photographer designated uh, makes a world of difference because you don't want to rely on the school staff yeah. having the enthusiasm um, of wanting to pose those kids. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus, they don't know how to pose kids. Right. Uh, you know, they just plop them down. They don't realize, yeah, I don't want the shoes coming straight at the camera. I don't want to see what's at the bottom of their feet. Or whatever, mm -hmm. so angles and and things like that. I think that's that's huge, uh, especially knowing that there's some national chain where they it's just one photographer, and they right. go in with just the one photo. I can't yeah, even I imagine. Can't yeah, it's a, definitely a two person job, and sometimes, you know, with the younger toddlers, I call it eighteen months to two and a half. Those are the hardest ones. And mm -hmm. a lot of them do cry. And I always request that their teacher is in there and chaperoning them and helping. Um, and I'll work with the teacher posing the child. Because there's some yeah. that I, you know, yeah. I can't even get near. So um, yeah. it does help having, yeah, the, the teacher in the room. Also, when you, did, when you come up with your set, whether it's green screen, whether it's very simplistic, whether it's very ornate with, heavy on the props test that out you know yeah. put on your facebook yeah. if you don't have your own kids or uh friends of your kids whatever put it out mm -hmm. on facebook model search or whatever this age of this age group and then test that set out because that way you know okay this is the flow they're going to come in they're going to stand they're going to go right here and they're going to sit them from sitting they're going to step up and crisscross applesauce right there and then they're done. Well, and with newborns, um, always have some sort of bucket or basket with a blanket. And a couple of that matches. Foam yeah, little foam pillows or even mm. little the little neck pillows I have found work really well with helping keep babies stable in the bucket. Or, <laughs> yeah. or, or babies in the bucket or, or in the bimbo. basket. Bimbo. Yeah, the bimbo. I yeah. That up yeah. too and use that. Um, 
We got uh, one more question coming in here. I can answer it from Chris. I missed the answer. How do you charge more for a five by seven class versus five by seven portrait? You can't in photo day. Um, that is not possible. So that's why you missed that answer because we didn't answer it. <laughs> yeah. So five by so, seven is five by seven. So our five by seven or eight by ten is going to be more expensive than what we would charge for a class photo. Be it if we don't do five by sevens, but we'll do eight by tens. So we there's no way of doing that right now in photo day, um, but hopefully they're working on that. Um, but we've turned it around and and made that a loss leader or basically a fundraiser for the school. Give give them uh, the school images uh, via digital or prints. Put a value on that, and that's part of their commission. Yeah, for, yeah, replacement or replacing their commission with the class photos since they're they're difficult to sell yeah. anyway. You don't sell a whole lot yeah. when yeah. you do. It's yeah. a little bit harder to go yeah, to market with them. I never understood a class picture of newborns. I'm like, I don't. They can't even sit up. Like, I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> like, what? It's not like they're hanging <laughs> out with each other on play dates. Yeah. Yeah, they so. won't remember yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Someone's like, anything. why do you why do you need this? I think it's more of like you guys, you know, go back to saying. I think Justin Grafton said it during a sync presentation. You guys, as photographers, you are you are historians. You are taking photos of a moment in time of a group of people yeah. together. Yeah. And it is archived over time. And that is what the schools yep. want to see, right? That is what your customer as in the school yep. or the daycare, that's what they're wanting to see that archivable, like here's our groups and here's our teachers um, yep. over if time. they want it, I'll do it, yeah. Yeah, um, I loved when he said that. I was like, yeah, it's, it's just a picture. It's forever. It's basically forever. Yep. <laughs> so it's gotta and be I good. Never say, I never say no, I always say yes, but there's a price. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yep. So, um, she told me and that nothing one. is ever free. It's complimentary. Yeah. And we never shoot a school. We photograph a school. That'll get yes, you in trouble yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, it's hard. We we've all had the you know because we, we used to say it all the time and until that sadly started mm -hmm. becoming a thing. And yep. um, yeah. you gotta go. You photograph things now. So mm -hmm. not shoot. I don't shoot people i photograph yeah. people so <laughs> exactly exactly oh my like gosh it. um another question is how do you get permission to use uh the children's photographs for advertisement purposes um through photo day i think this is more of a a reach people on paper forms used to have a little checkbox but honestly yeah. that checkbox wasn't even it was it wouldn't even hold up enough that checkbox was not the right permission so even though yeah. people were doing that that was never gonna hold up oh. We oh. had some, that little was a bitty. little bitty font on our order form. If the you don't want, bottom. you know, we, we own the copyright yeah. to the image. And unless you check this box, uh, uh, you're giving us permission to use their images. Yeah, that was so shady. So uh, what yeah. I would do is when I'm designing a set, I would either, you know, at one point use my own children, um, neighborhood kids, um, any, you know, like the model search. I will use those as our samples. Or if there's just one that's really cute that I took and I like, I will contact the school or, you know, or, or the parent and say, I'd like to use this Is it, you know, do you have a problem with it? Yeah. I mean, if yeah. sometimes they come back, oh, you're going to use it. Oh yes, please. That'll be great. Other times they'll be like, well, what do I get for it? How about I give you an eight by 10 yeah. or I'll give you, I'll give, I'll give you, you all the social one. media files of the entire shoot, whatever the case may be. And just make sure that you have something in writing. Yeah. Don't just, you know, even in email, even though, you know, you've communicated and you've got it back from them, have something that's tangible uh, to track that down so they can't come back at you at a later date and go, uh, uh hmm, I never said that. Yeah. Because that sure. has happened. Yeah. So that, that kind of leads into our next thing is the marketing, your, your pre and post picture day marketing. Um, you know, we'll just go through this workflow really uh, quick. We'll spend a whole lot of time on it. It's like a whole nother webinar, but, um, but you know, with, uh, do you both utilize advanced pay for your preschools? Yes, I do. No. So, yes, so I you, do. you got no advanced pay and yes, advanced pay. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, with advanced pay, Sue Ann, how's that communication going out before picture days through email um, and flyers um, through school? Both. I've got, I send out emails for the ones that have emails, plus they get a flyer delivered to the school in advance uh, about two to three weeks. 
And then um, if they don't have emails at all, then they just get the flyer. But I do um, try to get them to, even if they don't do the advance pay, they have a, they will opt in, you know, so I, I, mm -hmm. I get that extra in advance. I'm not worried so much about the money in advance, but that's the only time they get free shipping with me is if they do an advance pay. So that's usually the incentive to get the, the advance mm -hmm. pay. Yeah. And then your post picture day marketing, after you publish a gallery, can you um, walk through the, the steps on what you do to get that communication out to parents and get the sales up and going? Me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, well, I wasn't sure if you were just saying in general. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, for post, um, the day the photographer leaves, they leave the second because uh, I print one one time. I print two flyers. Um, one is sent in advance, and one for the advance pay. The other half is um, the post. It's left with the school to be passed out that day. And then we also, um, once the gallery is published, we will send emails out um, to all those schools. So we're hitting them up twice. They're they're getting three flyers or basic well not four because they get uh two printed and two emails and then they get the text marketing yeah so i do mine since we don't do advance pay but i do get the information um early and probably two weeks out i will send um i don't think it i think it's the published marketing piece but i'll yeah. take out the verbiage and put my own and in place of the picture, I put, I upload a picture of the set that we will be oh, using. Oh, okay. And Got I it. email that prior to picture day, you know, two weeks out, then, you know, the next week, and then like, you know, the two days before. And I'll send that out so that the parents see that photo. Right. Mm -hmm. Of the set. And then, of course, I'll send it to the school so that they can post that, that design, that set as well. So I'll yeah. do that before, yeah. and then like coming back, um, when we come back, I'll use yeah the published gallery marketing piece, and your photos are ready. Yeah, viewing. yeah. Um, Andrea brings up a good point. She said she thought Jay Boat Ray was telling everyone they had to text the text and number to be notified. The pictures were up. Yes, that is the definitely the sales method. We recommend a hundred percent of the time for group or public galleries. For private galleries, everyone has a unique code that they would have to text the 90738. So we tend to simplify that communication by using um, the photo day marketing flyers. flyers. Um, these flyers are pre-generated, so you don't have to manually create one for every single um, subject yep. in your job. Um, and they will automatically do that for you. Just go in and create the flyer itself and you see where this access code box is and the subject's name. And this is populated um, with the data from the job. If you have email addresses, once you save, you can email these out to everybody. If you don't have email addresses, you can download all the flyers or send them and print them out as printing flyers. Um, so you can kind of do it either way or both ways, um, mm -hmm. all the ways. I'm a big marketing communications person, so all as the much ways. as you can communicate, <laughs> yeah. everything yeah. you can possibly do, because you are going to get a return. This is definitely what you put into it is what you will get back out of it type scenario. So the more communication, yeah. the better. Always. Exactly. Stay on top of it. Um, and then at the, like at the end of the school year, this like, you know, come June or July, I'm be like, send it all. Cause all it's all in one gallery, right? My school. So I'll send mm -hmm. a marketing piece that says these photos are about to be archived. Here's your last chance, you know, save, spend this much and get free shipping. Yeah, but we yeah. never archive them. We just we tell don't, them we, that. Yeah, we, we just tell them. But. We're liars. She's a liar. <laughs> I am going to archive it. She's a liar. She's not. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So um, I just wanted to get back on track here because I have, like, I mean, we, we had a lot going on, so I was trying to, to go up. I think one of the most important things that um, – or one of the more important things, too, we wanted to share today is, like, more importantly is, like, what are your customers saying? And what are the schools saying about your photo day workflow? Um, in general, the parents happy? Are the schools happy? Do they like the change? Mm -hmm. um, can you share some of that? I don't know who wants to go first. Which one do you guys uh, want to go? I'll, I'll go. Um, they love it. They love they're doing less work at the school. Um, the parents love how fast they're getting to see their pictures. 
the variety um, and you know they're not limited or told what they have to buy in advance um, so they're getting to mix and match and the fact that they can break packages up and it doesn't have to be all one pose and it could be multiple poses mm -hmm. it's making them happier they're buying more you know in general just because somebody's not telling them what to do and I yep. think everybody's happy all the way, all the way around it, it's great and, and just to add, I mean, I would say ditto to everything that Suzanne said, and, and then I, it got me thinking two things that we didn't discuss, at least for our workflow, is one, I think I saw somebody talk about QR codes and, and so forth. Scrap all QR code notions to the wind when it comes to preschools. You know, you, the workflow, it's just, it's not going to work. Uh, not you maintain sanity uh, or profitable because you'll have to have so many people trying to to achieve that goal. So that's the upside also with photo day. And then the next thing is, is we don't do prepay or advance pay, um, but we also use we're religious uh, users of Miller's lab. And so we have um, the option of doing the, is it drop? Or is it bulk? What is it? Bulk. Oh, well, for some bulk reason, ship. yeah, the drop and bulk. bulk yeah. I always get it confused. Bulk versus drop. That was our next It's basically. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're rolling right into it. You're rolling right into it. Okay, you roll right into it. So we have two of our preschools that we offer bulk shipping, complimentary free shipping to the school if they order by this date. Usually I give them a week. And then after that, they will, it switches over to direct shipping where it'll be directly shipped to the parent at their cost they, with the fee. So if they order it within the week, they go to the school and they have no shipping fee. If they wait till it expires, then they have to pay. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a... an incentive. And, if I'm and that not option mistaken, is only, that's only available with Miller. That's so only I'll with the Miller's option. Yeah. Right. Correct. So it's, 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 and we do that with pretty much all of our accounts. We offer that um, via Miller's. So, you know, the, the pushback, whether you're, you're shooting sports, oh, I miss the order forms and counting that money and so forth. Well, if you tell them they're going to get free shipping, but they got to place it within a week, they're going to get busy and they're going to place their orders. So it, it all works out in the end for sure. Yeah. And that one thing I kind of wanted to close with before we got to the very end too, is that you guys are dealing with the next generation of parents. You have young subjects and most of your parents are very young compared to those that are shooting high schools, underclass, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, some of the rec sports or travel teams, your parents tend to be much younger. Um, yeah. You have more younger parents, I should say, not that everyone's young, but you have more younger parents there that are more in tune um, they're more technologically savvy they come to expect technology they like to communicate in different ways um so i think it's important for always for all of us collectively in volume photography is to really listen um to what preschool photographer customers are saying because they are the future of all volume photography as those kids grow they're going to have expectations that our current customer base you know as of the last five ten years doesn't have um, they're going to expect yep. it to look different. They're going to expect that authenticity, that value, um, that connectivity that you have um, using technology versus a paper form. Um, and the more that you appease that generation, um, that consumer, the higher more sales you're going to go, the more successful you're going to be. So I think that's a really important thing to note. Um, and I was just thinking of it as you guys were talking. So I wanted to share yeah. it. I wasn't even planning. Hey. Seriously, it's me to think that. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, true. Um, for sure. So uh, let's talk. Close out with the dashboard app. Is that your favorite feature or what? Can you talk about the Oh, oh yeah. Cha-ching. 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 Okay. You want to hear something? Here's something negative about it, okay? Oh, boy. I'll point oh boy. out the negative. When you're not working, you get to see other people posting their sales <laughs> and their PD100s and everything else, and you just you go to your dashboard app, and you're like, 
I miss you, Dashboard app. It says zero today. It says zero this week. Why? Why? But then when oh all of a sudden God. you, like yesterday, we posted two like, volleyball clubs. And two preschools. And two preschools. So and it was like, cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching, I was like, we're back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Made you feel We're good back. again. We, you fell what off. did we have? We had five PD 100s within like five hours last yeah. night, and I was just like, "Yeah, baby, we're back." Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I mean, I, I love the uh, the connectivity you ha it gives you to your business. Do you always know your sales? Yeah. What you did this week? What you did today? Um, yeah. Big orders that come through the images. You can get a glimpse on the images they're buying. <sighs> Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a pat on the back for yourself, right? Like, yeah, I yeah. did that. I did that. Yeah, you can find out what pose is working. You can find out, you know, are they liking the black and white? Um, how much are they spending? Um, I like the survey. Like you said, they have they have that survey that we can look at on the dashboard. Um, so you can see what they're rating you, what your clients are rating you, and what they're saying or not saying. <laughs> <laughs> like you you're a terrible photographer you make my kids laugh too hard <laughs> oh we were talking hard. about that the other day my kids are laughing too hard you're a terrible photographer i'm like did they really just say that like what's going on <laughs> that's three years all you do is make my kids laugh i'm like <laughs> and <laughs> they oh gave God. us a two because we made their kids smile too hard we got a two yeah. because we, we so, made them smile so you can download the Photoday dashboard app as a Photoday user um, in iOS or Android. It's available for both platforms now as of today. So if you're an Android user, that was just released a few weeks ago. Um, but make sure it's called Photoday dashboard um, in either app store and log it in with the same, you log in with the same credentials you use to log in the Photoday. Um, and you can have access to all your numbers on the go. Um, but yeah. yeah. Something we didn't mention too is when we upload that data to the capture app, upload yourself, put yourself in as a parent so that mm -hmm. you can see what they're seeing, especially starting out. So you can see what they see, or if they get a phone call, you can log in, you know, and, and step them through the ordering process too, until you get familiar with uh, it. I, yeah. that's, I found that helpful in the beginning yeah. for myself. So I could see what parents are seeing as if I, I if, it's yeah, definitely. as if I'm a parent. Yeah. 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 Um, we missed one question. I just want to circle back. Um, how did you determine the market average incentive amount? I give preschools the incentive options of one free photos of teacher uh, for teachers two fundraiser of $3 for every package sold and those that include digitals or three a class collage. Is that a fair offering? Do you think? I don't know I about the oh, go ahead. Oh, that's okay. I, it, it depends on your area. You have to know what your your competition's doing. So what works for you is going to be different from what works for me. So it, it's you have to know your area. Yeah. I mean, just just the percentage. We're here in, in Houston, Texas. It's 10%. So Ann's in West it's, Florida? No. Yeah, Central. Are you in so, and it's your Central Florida? And it's yeah. 15. So, I mean, you know, there's a 5% swing there. Um, yeah. And preschools might be different than K through 12. Than K through, K through 12 or, or whatever, right. especially in your area. So it, it just, it, it really depends. Uh, and you're going to be, you know, I would not go in, you know, don't go in offering all this free stuff. I know it's very easy and very tempting to do that. Uh, but, you know. They'll my, ask you, they'll say, well, what do I get? Right. Let what them, do you give back? Yeah, let them come you, at you with that. And you're like, well, what are you used to getting? <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. shoot it all down. <laughs> no way, 20%. You get excellent photography uh, and excellent customer service. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, my God. Exactly. And, have, and your parents' biggest complaint is they want them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're too yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, you got to figure out a way. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, I, we're like 38 minutes over and I really appreciate you guys' time. I know I said an hour, but we just got on a roll and it was good stuff. And and our everybody attending was cheering us on and asking questions. So I guess it was great. Right. So thanks for sticking yeah. around. But um, I'll do the most boring part, which is how much does photo day cost at the end? <laughs> so you guys get all of this. So.
<laughs> and, and if you're new, I just I'll share the cost. You know, it's 10 percent uh, fee only on the order value, not on tax or shipping. Um, there's a uh, we uh, current our payment processor is currently Stripe. There's a 2.9 percent credit card processing fee plus 30 cents in order. Um, and then the lab costs, everything is coming directly out of that end customer's transaction to expedite everything. So you don't have to pay your lab bill anymore. There's no giant, you yeah. know, two, $3,000 charges every week um, when you're cranking in volume. Um, I know Sue Ann really misses her Amex points or her credit card points. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say, I do miss that. Oh, I do miss that. that. I miss the only thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, but you don't have to deal with it anymore. So it's like one yeah. last thing you have to think about as you go quality um, of life yes as you go along it just allows you to keep shooting and extending your season um and doing more of the fun stuff less of the not so fun stuff so we include everything for free basically photo day is a freemium model so everything is free until you start selling something um so we have free text marketing email marketing the capture app um we have free auto head sizing and the crop tool um, digital downloads. We don't charge extra for those. We have unlimited storage, marketing resources, all the support. Um, and through academy and education that you need, we do offer. Um, you know, the, the lab costs inside Photo Day are very similar to what your favorite labs are already charging. That's Miller's. It's the sports and event pricing. Andrea, to answer your question, if it's a bulk job um, through Miller's and it, it gets the free overnight shipping, the same rules that they have now um that is paid for so uh that is through miller's the shipping fees um that your customers pay shipping directly to the labs um they're very affordable they're an average of five bucks um that they're paying for shipping that includes tracking all the way to their doorstep through text and through email um so all of that um works out so Laura, your question, will something besides Stripe be added at some point maybe someday down the road not right now um with all the things we're building um, they are a very secure payment processor. We have had zero issues with hundreds of thousands of transactions and little to no chargebacks. So they've been a really good payment provider so far. So you do get what you pay for in the terms of payment providers out there. Um, so we are, you know, we are less is more here. We want to work less, not chase the money down. So, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you guys. Thank you for everything. I won't thank bore you. you so much with the fees, but um Thanks, Robin, Jennifer, and Sue Ann for your time today. I know you guys are busy and you're in season. So we really appreciate it. So I'm sure everyone here appreciates it. So thank you for your time and sharing your knowledge um, and your experience today. Um, and yes. if anyone else has any anytime. questions, they yeah, can reach out to us anytime. Yeah. Yeah, anytime. Robin or Jennifer us. at yeah. Sock Monkey Photography. Yes, like, yeah. yeah, you guys can find us right on the website. Um, and if you're not part of the Photo Day Users Group on Facebook, I implore you join the Photo Day Users Group. It's a great place to ask questions amongst your peers and get some real time answers and look at that feedback. So thank you guys so thank much. You. Thank you. Bye, Lisa. everybody. It's like my record. <laughs> so, <thank you. laughs> I'll see you around. All right. Bye. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.